Yeah. I uh, well, one other thing that you know kind of struck my attention to it was um, <laughs> the mythological gods and all that stuff. And every time you look back in history, you look at what these people are digging up as far as even with the pyramids, with the uh, Mayans and all that stuff. They it was fallen angels, these gods, so right, they, you know, right, gee, and you know. Um, a lot of them looked reptilian. They looked like what, uh, you know, they weren't human. You knew that. Right. And I just feel that, you know, uh, like in today's world, right now, what we're dealing with, David Icke and other people, even I have family members who have even told me that they have seen this shapeshift thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Denver airport and all that. I listen right, to everybody, right. whatever they got to say. And I, I never thought, oh, no, this is impossible because, see, I believe in God. If you don't believe in God... And like they say, America has turned satanic, and mm -hmm. a lot of the Christians don't want to know. And, yep. you know, you have to, you know, to be a Christian, God tells you, do not be deceived. You know, you're supposed to keep your eyes open. You're supposed to, you know, his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Exactly, Hosea 4.1. Yeah, you, you know, exactly. you have to uh, pay attention to everything that's going around, because it all makes sense if you, it's like, one thing David Ike said that was perfectly good was he said that uh, this was in the uh, Brandon Corey, I don't know if you ever saw that video, but he said that it's like a quilt, all these pieces, and there's so much going on today. I mean, it's, it's from everything. Everything, 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 everything is all occultic. Exactly. And if you put a piece here, a piece there, a piece here, you know, it's a big quilt. And everything that you thought was plain and simple, your Disney uh, shows for right. little kids, you know, to... Even the way you know, Washington school, was laid out. Yeah, you know, when I first saw that, and then when I heard about the Statue of Liberty, right, right, came over, right. you know, I'm like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's been know, there since the very, very beginning, since the founding of America. It's been right, founded you know. on Freemason roots. Absolutely. And, you know, when you speak of those reptilians and what, what happened to Princess Diana, you know, right, I don't know right, if right. the whole thing behind there, but... She even called them uh, the reptilians. Yeah, absolutely. She called them the reptiles or something. Yeah. So, you know, this stuff is here. And as, you know, and the Bible tells us we're not supposed to drink blood. But right, what do those exactly. vampires do? What exactly. do they say the Queen of England, uh, Bohemian Grove, and all those people, right, right, people right. do? So, you know, it's all here. You just got to be willing to listen, open your ears up a little bit, you know, and do your research and pray. See, that's one of the most important aspects, what you just mentioned about the blood. Because what people don't realize is that the whole reason that the flood came upon the planet was because of the, the hybrid seed uh, between the, the watchers and the daughters of man. And when they created this race of giants, this race of giants was a bloodlusting, cannibalistic um, creation that uh, warred against the seed of Seth and the seed of Adam. And when they started eating the flesh, cannibalizing humans and drinking the blood, that's when the Lord brought the flood upon the planet. It wasn't to right. wipe out all of the good seed. It was to wipe right. out all the hybrid evil beings that were doing the blood drinking and the cannibalism. And that was why when he established his covenant with Noah and his family, he said that you shall not eat of the flesh or eat of the blood or drink of the blood uh, or your spirit and your life will be required of you. That was the right. one covenant that he established with Noah after repopulating the planet. And so that those things are very, very important because people don't understand that at the very highest levels of Satanism, you have these fallen angels that are possessing these dark, evil beings that are willing to give their souls over to them. And they are going through two different... Um, two different paths, lycanthropy and vampirism. And those right. are the fallen angels hungering because, you know, they're, they're immortal spirits until the end of days, um, but they lust after blood and flesh still. And so when these high-level Satanists give themselves over, that's what happens to them. They become vampiric and lycanthrop, and they hunger for blood and flesh. And people don't realize that. That's just like, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this guy either, Bill Schneeblin. Oh, sh yeah, yeah. Schnoblin. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay, now he was talking about it too, because I think part of his little initiation into being a high priest or whatever, he had to pick between a werewolf or a vampire. Right. And he chose the vampire because he said the werewolf was too, I don't know, I didn't get the whole just of that, but he said that when he began to drink the blood, even his DNA changed. Right. So what is that telling you? And he lusts for blood. Exactly. You know, he wanted blood. 
And uh, I found that very interesting. Um, even like, um, I forgot what the lady's name is, but they had it on the History Channel. And I looked it up. I can't remember her name. It was a lady who was in the uh, castle, and I guess her one of her servants uh, had a little cut on her, and then she started hungering for blood, and she wound up getting these uh, girls to come in here, and she would drain them of their blood and take a bath on their blood because it was supposed to make her young. But really what they were saying... And oh, that say queen. It, You're talking about yeah. that one queen. Yeah. Yes. And what they didn't say was, you know, she was of the serpent race. This lady was actually drinking blood and wanted the youth of eternity and, you know, all this stuff that is with Satanism, is with uh, the fallen angels. She was doing the same thing, but they didn't bring it out that way. You, you know, you, you listen to your TV shows. Like last night I listened to the one about Jesus Christ. They're trying to make him uh, like a regular man. Just a prophet, right, right. You know, so. Yeah, with the whole Da Vinci Code deception and how they're yeah. going to try to bring the Antichrist through the Merovingian bloodline and all that. Right, right. Um, so. I was going to quote, since we're talking about this, uh, the, the blood drinking and the flesh eating and the cannibalism, for those people do, that don't believe that this is happening and that it, there's a, a chapter in Micah, Micah 3, that talks specifically about this, and I'm, I'm going to read it. Um, okay. It, it says, Micah 3, And I said, Here, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, it is, not, is it not for you to know judgment, who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones? who also eat the flesh of my people, and flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones, and chop them in pieces, as for the pot, and as flesh within the cauldron. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. And so right there, it, Micah tells us that, you know, the, these evil, wicked people are um, cooking people, eating flesh. Yeah. It sounds like your modern-day satanic and witchcraft that you hear about. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I, like I said, I, I never really believed that people could be so evil, but um, just my experiences growing up, and I would see, you know, I could, I guess I'm a, probably a sensitive person if somebody comes around me i can just look at them and i try not to do that because i don't want to be judgmental but i'll I'll look at them and i'll sense something from them and what comes out of their mouth yeah what comes out their mouth like god says you know you got a uh the wheat and the tares and all that you really can't tell when they're younger when they grow up and what comes out their mouth what what you know fruits they say out their mouth and their deeds Mm -hmm. these people i'm sure were you know into some kind of um I don't want to say they were Satanists or whatever, but they, they definitely weren't Christians. Right. So, And um, when you speak about the wheat and the tares, um, that also is a parable that people cannot understand unless they understand the two bloodline theory. Um, right. The wheat and the tares. The tares are the Canaanites in that whole bloodline, and the wheat, those are the good, the Sethite line. Right. Yeah, yeah I definitely believe in the serpent seed line. Um I just know that it's infiltrated, you know, I know it's everywhere, but really America is so deep, and <sighs> it's almost scary, but, you know, when you think about it, like when I was reading this uh, Satanism in America, you know, what they were saying about the end times, and, you know, I read it in the Bible already, but just to really, really have somebody document it, that this is what they're planning on doing to us as far mm-hmm. as gathering all the Christians up and tormenting us, and, you know, because they, they have a thing about... Yeah, they have a thing about tormenting. It's supposed to, right. I guess, the penile gland or something. It and they fills get more. the blood with enz- or endorphins or whatever like that. And then when yeah. they drink the blood, they get high off of it. Yeah, that's all pretty crazy stuff, but it's the truth. If you do your research, you find that, you know, the truth is stranger than friction, uh, fiction. Yeah, 